culture juice. Take 30 million Africans from their mother fatherland, blend for 600 years in the new world, 400 years in America. Stir 300 years of bodies in chains on auction blocks, rub tar and feathers, cancel lynching and colored only Johns, spend 100 years in emancipation, hopscotch around black codes, watch Ghana, great Jim Crow to integrate education, plus 20 years of civil rights. Hello, Africa. Add 400 tons of elbow grease in the American School of Hard Knocks, sift, 150 years of blues with 5,000 years of sacred songs and 100 years of jazz, 50 in the fields and back alleys. 30 years of rhythm and blues with 20 years of rockabilly rock. Pour 25 years of funk, 15 of thin visibility, add 40 years of OG rap. Love legacy, leave respect for all brothers and sisters. Shake, rattle and rock, lift every face from cafe au lait to chocolate. Thank our creator, toast today, and let's drink to tomorrow. Creole daddy ways. My daddy's Creole, my, my Creole daddy's first wife was caramel cute, five feet petite, had wavy hair like white folks, a cradle Catholic, church going regularly like waking up to sunshine. sunshine. She was his sweetheart, warming the home front when his long river road trips kept him away nights, delivering newly rolled tobacco packed like sardines in wooden boxes. Then something about one homecoming. She asleep in the sheets she pressed so perfectly. Daddy said she broke his heart in half like a walnut split down the middle. My Creole daddy's second wife was my mother. Deep dark chocolate, tall like me, 5'8", heavy boned, a black beauty, he said often. She a PK, a preacher's kid, the eldest, the rock of her family, born and raised Baptist, Mount Zion style, had no idea why my Creole daddy saw beauty in her face. But she could sew, grow roses like her, Chapatula's mom, heal most cuts and ailments with herbs from the yard. From Baptist, mother converted to Catholic to marry my Creole daddy. And that was the last time most saw him in church until his end. My chocolate Creole mother was more Catholic than my Creole daddy, he said, and she prayed enough for him. She played, prayed to the Blessed Mother and practiced healing when folks needed it. Few spells, only blessings. When she passed, my world crushed like smashed pecans, scattered hope here, broken dreams there. I see her nose daily in my mirror. I kiss with her lips, smile with her eyes. She taught me to crochet when it rains for days, to find the beauty in any space of a home. And though she feared water, I swam for her brought home medals to assure her the kindness of water and that Negroes can swim. Mother, really? Okay, okay, you swim for me, she said. My Creole daddy's last wife, Dee Dee, was tall and milk chocolate, rocking Baptist and the rock of her family, raising nine kids alone, caring for her ailing father, a good Christian woman. Like my mother, she sang any day. My mother sang Charles Brown's, bells will be ringing. Any season, anytime she had a mouth to belt it out like a sneeze. But Dee Dee, she sang, amazing grace, how sweet the sound. All hours of the day, staggering or sober. Now Dee Dee was common and had little common sense, stayed drunk daily. And that ain't no big my team, no big lie. Told me I was small because I earned my way. So I said, my Creole daddy insisted that I stand up for myself. I have to lay it down for anything or anyone. Skills, he said. A woman had to have skills her own. Just not too many, so she don't need a color man. Didi's last daughter, about to graduate Joseph S. Clark High School like me, was killed going to the senior prom, a hit and run on the new Claiborne Avenue interstate. Like me, she wanted college, choices a woman can make for herself. Carol Ann died instantly, and that killed so much in DD, my Creole daddy's third and last wife. Some say she drank herself to death. 
And they say DD had bourbon with a Coke back for breakfast most days and I can witness. Still, I know better, grief. Grief got hold of her like the left side of bad luck and never let go. Finally, she has peace.